Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. Coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so happy that you're part of our beautiful Reading With Your Kids family. We hope you are connected with us on social media. Facebook.com slash Reading With Your Kids. At Jed Lee Magic on Twitter. At Reading With Your Kids on Instagram. We have a wonderful guest for you today. Her name is Alicia Pace. And she's going to be telling us about her brand new book, How to Potty Train a Dinosaur. And later in the podcast, we are also going to meet Lyndon, a wonderful young person that we met at the Chicago Toy and Game Fair. She's going to tell us all about the type of books that she loves to read. I also just want to mention really quickly in, in my interview with Alicia, we refer to, um, we refer to the book as, book title as How to Train a Dinosaur to Use a Potty. Um, at, at that time, that was the working title. Since it's been published, it has been changed. And the title that you want to search is how to potty train a dinosaur one title that is not changing is the title of my friend holly kinley's book pilates for parenting this is a fantastic book and it absolutely should be part of your parenting library pilates for parenting helps us as caregivers and as parents to get to the heart of parenting to take the time we need to evaluate what to do and become more in tune with our children it's it's a book that you're going to be using over and over and over again. It really is the best method for reconnecting with your children and the best method for developing stronger relationships. And, you know, we here at the Reading With Your Kids podcast, that's what we're all about. That's what this podcast is all about, building stronger relationships with our kids, starting those conversations that can last a lifetime. Pilates for Parenting is absolutely a book that is going to enhance your family and help you grow together closer as a family. Check it out today, Pilates for Parenting by Holly Kinley. It is available on Amazon. Joining us on the line from right outside of Provo in Utah, we have a wonderful guest, another friend from Familius Publishing. She is the author, illustrator of a great new board book that's coming out in the spring called How to Train a Dinosaur to Use the Potty. Please welcome to the show, Alisa Pace. Alicia, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. We, Alicia and I just uh, had a, a, a lovely, fun chat about Costa Rica. We both, um, both our families spent some time down there uh, this, this past summer and a uh, lovely place. We had different experiences and um, that's part of the fun of traveling and comparing notes. Yeah, yeah, it was a good time. Yeah. So tell us about the good time we're going to have reading How to Train a Dinosaur to Use the Potty with Our Kids. Yeah, so it's just kind of a fun, humorous book to uh, get children excited about using the potty because potty training, if you've ever been there, it's uh, <laughs> a fun time for everyone. So uh-huh. <laughs> uh, I wanted to try to take it from a different approach, do a little bit of role reversal. Uh, I noticed that sometimes sitting on the potty, if I brought like a stuffed animal or something and had my daughter explained to the stuffed animal, you know, how how she knew it was time to go potty or just kind of let her teach the stuffed animal. Uh, it would encourage her more to, to run to the potty to, to show her teddy bear how to do it, you know. So that's kind of how it, it all began. But yeah, hopefully it will be something all the kids will enjoy and well, what a brilliant way to approach this. Uh, I've always said, and uh, whether whether you're talking about uh, reading or math or, or even magic in, in my field, uh, learning a magic trick, one of the best ways to learn something is to teach it to somebody. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's true in athletics It's because it, it makes you think about it and um, – Kind of takes the pressure off, and um, that I, I I really have to give you credit. That was a it's a brilliant way to approach this very important, probably one of the most important lessons we can learn. <laughs> yeah. and it's something yeah. that we have to try to explain to you know someone who's 
you know, maybe not even a year yet. Uh huh. Yeah. And I, I attempt a little bit to help the children sympathize with the parents a little bit. So they've got this dinosaur, and of course, like that poop is not going to be very fun to clean up. So kind of showing that like, oh, it's not, you know, the most pleasant thing. Like it would be really great if you could get this in the toilet, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm assuming that uh, perhaps you um, shared this with your daughter. Is she old enough to enjoy books yet? Yes, she loves books and she loves dinosaurs. So, um yeah, it's not out in physical print yet, but um, I've definitely showed her the illustrations and talked to her about it. But I'm excited to get my hands on the actual physical copy to read with her. This is this is really exciting. Now, is this the first board book that you've created? It's the first board book, but I've done many, many paperbacks and lots of hardcovers. And I illustrate a ton for other authors, um, but I only have a handful of my own. Mm -hmm. But this one was especially fun to write. There's something about writing board books, the simplification of it. I guess I just like jumping into illustrations. So it was fun to have a simple text to, I don't know, I felt like it stayed alive. Uh, The book that I wrote right before this one, Polly the Perfectly Polite Pig, um, it took a while, like lots of edits. It was like a regular hardcover book. And I felt like by the end, you know, it was just kind of, it was hard to keep up steam with lots of edits and trying to get the story arc to work and, you know, just trying this and that. And then I jumped to this board book and it was, I mean, it just kind of wrote itself, which was really refreshing and, and fun. So I feel like hopefully that energy comes through in the board book that it was just a, a fun project to work with uh, start to finish. That's exciting. Uh, it, 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 doing something different that that's slightly different than what you're normally doing. It, I think it, it kind of, kind of uh, makes us remember what we loved about writing or illustrating or whatever it was that, that we do. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't feel like work anymore. Mm-hmm. Just play. Now yeah. as, as an author illustrator, do you think of yourself more as an author, more as an illustrator? What comes first, the, the, the illustrations or the words or the story? Yeah, I would like to think of myself first as a storyteller, but mm. that's mainly on the illustration side. I feel mm. like I say a lot with my illustrations um, and I try to use as few words as possible, especially because I know as a parent, uh, it's nice when you're trying to put them to bed and you're excited to go have your your little break before <laughs> before bed. So you I don't, sometimes if the if the books are long winded, it's a little bit you know okay, let's get to the end so I can you know <laughs> have a little bit of peace. I mean it's fun as I, mean, I do really love reading to my child, but uh, so writing simply and trying to keep it as few words as possible to get a fun story across. Um, I enjoy doing that. So I I guess I consider myself mainly an illustrator, but first and foremost, a storyteller. Well, I think that's important. And, and, you know, I, I, as you're speaking, I, I, I sensed a little bit of guilt that you said, oh, you know, sometimes it takes a lot of energy, but it's true. It, it, (laughs) it takes a lot. I mean, I was speaking to the, the, you know, there's a, there's a brand new Dr. Seuss book out. And uh, we were we were speaking with the uh, the the last editor to work with Dr. Seuss before he passed away, and uh-huh. I loved reading Dr. Seuss books to my kids, but it was a lot of work. It uh-huh. really was. Yeah, I was you, just reading one. <laughs> it's yeah. you know the fox and socks, and uh, that was the one that my kids would <laughs> always want me to read because I stutter when I get to F's, and and if I'm tired, and you know this is the third or fourth book that the kids want me to read, and they would always pull that one out. And, you know, they want to do the voices and the energy, and it can be exhausting sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and I yep. think it, it's important for us to acknowledge that, that it does take a – it's worth the work. It's important for us to do, and it's, it, it really is worthwhile. But we, we need to acknowledge the fact that it, it, that it does take a lot of energy. Uh-huh. It's usually at the end of the day, and you're, yep, worn out. So, yeah, yep. But that's one of the things, one of the things that I really love when my kids were younger was taking a book that had a lot of simple text, but what was, you know, really the illustrations drove the story. 
Because a lot of times when we pick up that book for the third or the fourth or the 500th time, uh, we wouldn't have to read the words. We just right. look at the pictures and we'd follow the story along through the pictures, but we'd also go deeper into the pictures and find things that we hadn't noticed beforehand. Yeah, I do love that. So I do love when, yeah, you can read a sentence, you can kind of read it and then kind of slowly say it out loud to your child and then be soaking in the pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is that is enjoyable. Now, being a parent, as your child is is growing, does that change the way you approach your your projects? Um, yes, I think I think I'm coming up with. I get more and more inspiration from her. So this one was was dinosaurs, and as she's getting a little bit more into princesses, thinking about that, I definitely draw a lot of inspiration from her. And I think as she gets older. I think the stories might become more complex. Mm -hmm. And I also have noticed I tend to focus around things that I'm trying to teach her at the time. Um, like the last one, the Polly, the perfectly polite pig of just trying to, to teach manners. Mm -hmm. um, so I think as she gets older, there will be different things that I'll want to be, want to be conveying. So yeah, it's fun to see how that evolves. And I think also stylistically I could see, getting a little bit more realistic in the drawings right now. I keep it pretty simple. So it'd be, it'd be interesting to see what kind of picture book uh, your teenage daughter, future teenage daughter inspires you to create. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I wonder what will happen then. Speaking of inspiration, one of the things that you shared with me beforehand is that you spent more than a month down in Costa Rica working. Did that affect your your illustrations at all being in a different country being in in a, in a different environment yes yes actually so the book that i was i'm working on it's a big project um it's actually about illustrating the book of mormon a religious text mm -hmm. um and there's a lot of latin americans darker skin um and here while i was here i was always drawing the skin way too light uh so that the, they kept saying, like, oh, you got to darken the skin a little bit because here in Utah, there's not a whole lot of diversity. Mm -hmm. um, but so after being down there, I noticed that my drawings were getting a little bit more spot on with with features. There's like the cheekbones are a little different and then just able to draw the skin the color that it needed to be. So that was really helpful, actually. <laughs> Talk a, a little bit now. I, I know we came on to celebrate how to train a dinosaur to use the potty, which is coming out in the spring from our friends and families. But as you've mentioned, you've you've written and illustrated a, a number of books. Tell us about uh, a couple of other books that that you've illustrated and written in the past. Um, I worked on Christmas Angels, or is it the Christmas Angel? <laughs> it's been a while, um, and that one was like in Costco, and it was fun to see lots of response from that one and then another christmas book is coming out this year called the drummer boy you probably know the story mm -hmm. but it hasn't been redone in a while so i illustrated that one and then i have a ton that i've done um on amazon of uh coloring books but also like an anna green gables um story uh as well as a ton for a publisher called Mascot Books, like a self-publisher I do. Mm -hmm. I have done more than I could count for them of of authors that need illustrators. So, And then The Girl Who Had Almost Everything was my first book that I wrote, and I wrote that when I was pregnant, um, about a girl who gets everything she asks for from her parents. So her room fills to the ceiling with so many toys she can't even go out and play with friends because she has so much stuff. So she learns to that sharing is more important and giving is more important than getting and learns that stuff isn't what brings joy. So that one was kind of a fun one to work on, too. Yeah. You, you mentioned Anne of Green Gables. Now, did you travel to the land of Anne of Green Gables when in writing that book? Oh, I wish. I wish. <laughs> no, I did not, sadly. But that was a story that always stuck with me growing up. So this one was uh, Anna Green Gables learns to be grateful because I have red hair and uh, I just really connected with the character and she tries to dye her head, 
hair black. And I always wanted black hair when I was young. So she tries to dye it and it goes terribly wrong. You probably are familiar with the story, but turns her hair green. And so she learns at the end, you know, it's better to just accept your yourself and your beauty and what you've been given instead of wishing for something else. Because she horribly regrets her decision in trying to dye it when she has green hair. <laughs> well, you should definitely travel to Prince Edward Island. Uh, you would love it. Anne of Green Gables is everywhere. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> literally. Oh. Literally everywhere. There's, there's, <laughs> I'll put that on the bucket list. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's her home, and uh, we we traveled there, and then downtown there's a museum, and there's another thing, and another <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> my wife. I didn't read the book when I was a kid. I enjoyed you know, hiking around the the homestead. That was that was a lot of fun. And and then I was done. But my wife wasn't, so she really dug it. <laughs> 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 One of the things I noticed on your Amazon page is that you do write. Uh, you you have been involved in in a lot of religious uh, works. Is that something that's special for you, and and something that that you look to do? Yeah, I guess just growing up, um, I just, I guess I'm passionate about making it fun and exciting for the kids. Um, my parents were always religious in teaching us, but sometimes if they would grab the Bible and for us, also the Book of Mormon, um, it was, it could sometimes be a little bit hard to pay attention. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty passionate about trying to make it interesting and engaging with lots of pictures and visuals to kind of bring the stories to life for children. So that's definitely a passion of mine. Yeah. Well, I, I agree. I mean, it, you know, when you're hearing a story, whether it's from the Bible or the Quran or the Book of Mormon or, or, or just hearing Fox and Sox again, but if it's just read in a monotone, like you're reading the newspaper, you mm -hmm. don't get much out of it. Um, yeah. If if you can create a way to tell the story and and express those values that you're trying to teach the kids in a way that's exciting and um and, and really animated, that's the way to get get the, the lessons through. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, bring it to life. Yeah. So what else is is, is on your bucket list now that I've I've put Prince Edward Island on your bucket list? What other kind of things do you are, are you looking to accomplish as an author and an illustrator? Ooh. Um there's a lot of them. I just I feel like I, there's always like a story to tell in my soul. Uh -huh. There's one really deep inside that I just like can't quite get out that's uh I just, I really loved, I love magical things. I loved Matilda growing up. I love Mr. Magorium's Magic Emporium. I love Willy Wonka. So something, something mystical and quirky like that would be really fun. Um, and my grandma wrote a book that I'd really love to see the light of day that is just so sweet and tender. Um, that I would like to get out just of this little aunt who has all these anxieties and ends up having to to put away those anxieties to help um, someone. It's just really sweet in the way that it's written and really touched me. So I'm working on trying to make that one as best that I can and try to get it out. Um, so that's that's on the list, too. But that's right. Yeah, that's, just, what a what a great testament that would be to your grandmother to um, bring that book to life. Yeah, yeah, I'm hoping to. That's wonderful. Well, remind us where we can go to learn more about Alicia Pace and all the books that that you've uh, been a part of. Yeah, there's lots of places. My illustrations are at aliciapace.com. I'm on Instagram as Pace Paintings. P-A-C-E, paintings. And then I have a lot of my links to my Amazon books at foxcovebooks.com. Um, and then, yeah, if you just Google my name, you can see some of those books like Polly the Perfectly Polite Pig or The Girl Who Had Almost Everything. So Google me, I guess. <laughs> And definitely go over to familius.com and sign up for their newsletter so you can be the first to find out when How to Train a Dinosaur to Use the Potty is available and it's coming this spring. 
Thank you so much. Yeah, great. We've been speaking to the author and illustrator of How to Train a Dinosaur to Use the Potty, a great new board book that's coming to us this spring from our friends at Familius, Alicia Pace. Alicia, thanks so much for being part of the show. Well, thanks for having me. It was a blast to to chat with you. In just a moment, we're going to meet Lyndon, a wonderful young person we met at the Chicago Toy In Game Fair. And I want to use this opportunity to let you know that the Reading With Your Kids podcast and Jet Li's totally interactive magic circus, we're returning to Chicago February 8th and 9th. We're returning to the Kid Expo in Schaumburg, Illinois at the Schaumburg Convention Center. It is going to be a fantastic time. We are going to present the most exciting, totally interactive magic show that you are going to see. We're also going to be giving families an opportunity to find out what it's like to be a guest on the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Check it out today. Meet us out at the Kids Expo in Chicago, Schomburg Convention Center, February 8th and 9th. It's the Kids Expo. I'm here at the Chicago Toy and Game Fair. This is an amazing event, and I'm here with a young person who loves to read. What's your name? Lyndon. Lyndon. How old are you? Eleven. Eleven. I know I'm not supposed to ask people that get upset, but I'm, I'm, I wanted our listeners to know, because you're going to tell me what kind of books you love to, because you told me you love to read, right? What kind of books do you love to read? Um, I like to read graphic novels. I am so excited that you love to read graphic novels. When my son was younger, when he was like um, 16, he's like a grown-up now. He got married and... Married. But he got married. And when he was younger, he loved graphic novels. And I used to go in there going, man, will you read a book without a picture, please? But I didn't realize that reading graphic novels is reading. Would you agree? They can't hear you not. Uh, I agree. Okay. (laughs) What's your favorite graphic novel? Um... I don't really have a favorite because I like mostly all of them, but uh-huh. one of the ones I'm reading right now is called Best Friends. What's Best Friends about? It's about this girl, I guess, who doesn't really feel like she fits in or something. Mm-hmm. Do, is there a reason why you're attracted to a book that, that talks about a girl who doesn't doesn't feel like she fits in? Um, well, I read the one before. It was kind of like there was two books. Uh-huh. So that's why when it came out, I just wanted to read it because I liked the first one. Super, super. Now, do you ever, I know that you're 11 and you're a very good reader and in, read independently, but do you ever, like, um, co-read or, or read a book with your with your parents? Uh, sometimes. Yeah? Do you like doing that? Sometimes. Yeah? What what is it? What what do you like about reading with your parents now? Even though that you're 11 years old. Well, like it taught me how to read more fluently. Uh huh. And that was one of the reasons I liked it. Yeah, that's something parents forget about is that the fact that when you're, you're reading a book, there's a like it can be very challenging for kids and 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 they they encounter words that they don't know, and if they're reading with their parents, parent can help them out. In my son's case, he could help me out because there are a lot of words I didn't know and he knew. Now, is do you do you have a favorite time to read? Usually at school during uh, SSR or at home during bedtime. Okay. Last question. Are you from Chicago? No, I'm from Indianapolis. Indianapolis? I have a friend. Do you like ballet? Um, I used to be in ballet. Well, I have a friend who's in the Indianapolis Ballet, so you can go check her out. That's cool. Yeah, we've been talking to Lyndon here at the Chicago Toy and Game Fair. Lyndon, thanks for being with us. Yeah, you're welcome. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Katie Malko. Katie's coming back to let us know all about the latest edition, the latest chapter in her Paw Elementary series. It's called Roxy's Adventure to the Hair Salon. That is the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Want to thank the folks who made today's show so very wonderful. Of course, we want to thank our guest, Alicia Pace. Be sure to check out her book, How to Potty Train a Dinosaur. Great new book from our friends at Familius. 
Also want to thank my new friend Lyndon from Indianapolis. We met her at the Chicago Toy and Game Fair. Want to thank our sponsors. Want to thank Holly Kinley. Be sure to add Pilates for Parenting to your parental library. And you really should have a parental library if you don't have one already. Also want to thank uh, my, my friends at the Chicago Kids Expo. Come on out and see us February 8th at 9th Schaumburg Convention Center in Schaumburg, Illinois. I want to thank my amazing producer, Fatima, for all she does for the podcast. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all of the support she gives me. I want to thank Augie the Doggy for having my back here in the studio. And most of all, I want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.